So I, I wish uh, every district council um, an office like the EKO. If you want to get good plans done in your district, you need a good office that can implement plans. That is an office that has support from uh, the Bureau and it has a little bit of money and so there's lots of excite, uh, in people that are working very hard to get things done. And without an office like the EKO, you can't get things done. My, off my district council in the Southern District would welcome a Southern District office like EKO, and I'm sure that if you want to get the plans done like we have for Kowloon City, that the only way we could get them done if we had an EKO there. So this is one solution for our harbour fronts. If we get for all the nine districts an EKO with a bit of money, a couple of containers on the waterfront, and some support from the Bureau to get it done. But support, of course, needs, uh, needs an excuse. And in Kowloon, the excuse is that we can create more development opportunities for business. We can create a new CBD in, in Kuntong. Tong. And that's the reason why the Bureau is happy that we have an EKO. So it seems that we need that kind of excuse for every district before we're going to get that kind of support. So if um, e uh, Nick is worried about where is the Harbourfront Authority, you've asked for $11 billion, and that might be why you're not getting it yet. So, I mean, and you haven't told them what you're going to get in return, how many GFA commercial space or how many residential space or what you're going to get in return, and you haven't told them that. So I think that's, that's an issue. Uh, I'm just quickly pointing out a few issues about connectivity. Um, the waterfront for the people, is this working? It's working. Nick has already mentioned this study we did with uh, the Worcester stu students. 73 kilometer waterfront, 27 kilometers has pedestrian access. About 19 kilometers is, if you look at the plans, temporary. I.e., things have been promised. We're going to get it. It's a question of when we're going to get it. 27 kilometers, there are no promises we're going to get it. This is, and if I show you this in the red line, the stuff we're not going to get, and there's no promise, of course, the container ports, the military facilities, uh, the cargo working area here. So there's some, the cruise terminal, we're not going to get access there. We can go to the roof if we want. Um, so there are bits and pieces on the other side, but that's predominantly the 27 kilometers we're not going to get. Uh, temporarily inaccessible is the blue, and I hope you can see it there in the, in the distance. But what you can see here, it's like a bit works and a bit doesn't work and a bit works and a bit doesn't work. It's all interrupted. Um, this is the schedule, what we have identified of progress. In the last five years, we got, got 4.6 kilometers additionally accessible waterfront for the people. There is on the plans another 2.8 kilometers between now and 2021. And I have no clue when are we going to get the rest. Because government hasn't told us yet. They have this question for the last three months. And they have not been able to answer what that timeline looks like. So I think that's a question that government should give us. And maybe we get it today. KK is still in the room. So KK can figure out an answer for that. But some of that we know we're going to get. Some of that is like the West Carlow Cultural District. It's in progress, we know. Some of that is a central waterfront. Most of it is already connected. But some of that is in the works with the central Wansa bypass. So we're going to get it. We know that it's on the way. Um, some of it, we have no clue. The Hoysam Park extension, which has been promised. When is the LCSD going to do it? No clue. Is there a vote identified in Let's Go? Nope. Is there a schedule? Nope. So we have no clue. So a lot of the 17 kilometers that has been promised, we have there is no schedule, and we need a schedule. Um, then there is a very different issue about access and en enjoyment, where uh, we, um, you know, we have this Kai Tak waterfront. We're going to get five hotels, and we have a public waterfront in front of it. So one way of getting it done, it's a new idea of government, why don't you ask the developers to do it? Don't wait for LCSD, ask the developers to do it. But it could be a good idea, it could be a bad idea, um, but let's, let's think about that, whether that's a good idea. I'll come back to that in a minute. So having all these desperate, uh, these, these 
uh, separate sections of waterfront, um, we've got to figure out detours, and I, I, Nick already mentioned it, we've got to get really good signage. How do you get around this disconnected waterfront and we have no clue when it will be done? So if we want to be able to walk from one to another, if you arrive at Kennedy Town, Sun Yat Sen Park, how do you get back to the rest of the waterfront? Can we make that, a, 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 can we make that route, at least temporarily, put some signets up? So how do we get those detours identified so at least we can walk? Now, the only one that's done reasonably well is that in West Kowloon Cultural District, uh, the, uh, the WKCDA the, has an office and has some money, and they put some reasonable signage up there, but we don't see signage anywhere else. Um, so we have situations like this, where people walk to the end of the little promenade here to find out that they can't get there, and then they have to find their way back, and then there is no signage. Um, or at the end there, how do you get back to the promenade? It's unclear. It's unclear. It's unclear. So we need, we need some improvements. So we have a lot of breakpoints, and we've got to figure out how we're going to get those breakpoints done. Here's another one in Kennedy Town. We end up at the end of your promenade, and you have no clue where to go next. So the, the, the point that I brought into, uh, highlighted with Kai Tak, is if we're going to have those uh, promenades uh, being done by the developers next door. Um, we also had this idea that New World was going to do one here too. And there is an existing little bit of promenade here that's uh, done by the developer. Now, in this particular case here, the developer owned the land. So the only way we could get the promenade is to stipulate in his uh, lease conditions when he surrendered the land and it was regranted the land to say, okay, you have to provide public access along over your land. This is our land. It's not the developer's land. Kaitak is public land. So when we think about connectivity, we have to really think about whether it's a good idea to kind of encumber that public land with some rights that we give to the adjacent uh, developers, whether that's a good idea or not but it will have impact on the use, on your right of use, on your enjoyment of that land. Now, the advantage is we can get it done quickly. We don't have to go through Let's Go, and we make the, the developers responsible. So speed in delivery is an advantage. The disadvantage is, what is this guy going to say you can and can't do? How is he going to maintain it? So there are issues, and, as a, and we should th think about that. I am not in favor of this model. I think it's okay that the guy pays for it, the same way that Swire fixes up Tongchong Street in the same way that Chong Kong fixes up the pavement in front of their building and Hong Kong Land fixes up the, build, the streets in Central. That's fine. After he's fixed it up, give it back to government. But don't let him to maintain and developers maintain ownership or some management rights over that land. I think that's not a good idea. Or at least if you do it, make sure it's not for more than two years so that you can change it. If he doesn't perform, he doesn't get it back. If he performs, he can have it for another two years. Other issues being brought up, the dogs. I got four dogs. As a district councillor, I got the biggest dog park in Hong Kong, the Spock Flam Dog Park. If there are issues with dogs, I get the phone call. I get a phone call from residents that don't like dogs. I got a phone call from residents that want more space for dogs. And if you say, can we have an area for kids, then I get phone calls from people saying, no, 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 there is already enough space for kids in the residential estates. This is for dogs. So I'm, I'm involved in this dog debate quite regularly. There is no problem with it to have dogs. You just got to be thinking about it. You got to let it happen. Dog sharing is not an issue, um, except for LCSD. And for the district councillors, where there are no dogs allowed at the moment, because then they have to make a positive decision allowing dogs. How do you do that? Then everybody's worried about their vote. Somebody may complain. I might lose a voter. So that's your thing to overcome. Cycling. Um, the biggest obstacle to cycling is, uh, again, transport department thinks that cycling can only be done safely when there's a cycling track, a physical infrastructure. Um, and the LCSD thinks that everybody's going to get killed when you have a cyclist on the path. The experience that you can see on East Coast Park in, uh, in Singapore very well is that people are really good in sharing space. They don't kill each other. <laughs> people don't. 
I mean, LCSD kind of stopped worrying. They don't kill each other. What happens at East Coast Park, we asked them when we were there, so you allowed them to share this footpath. Is that a problem? Any accidents? Yeah, there was on this corner, it's a bit sharp. We had some incidents in the beginning. And then it was all resolved. Because it's the same cyclists that go back and, back and forth in that space. It's the same pedestrians that are using the space. They get to know each other. They sort each other out. So they find a solution. They're very accommodative. They find solutions to sharing space. People are really good at that. We're all very good at that. So we don't need to stop that. And then, of course, the fishermen. Um, CY has taken this on. We're going to get fishing sheds. I'm very worried about that because he didn't say, I'm going to give these guys fishing shed. He said, we're going to create fishing zones, which means we're going to get no fishing zones outside the fishing zones. <laughs> so we don't need fishing zones. What we need is fishing sheds or facilities where people go fishing. It's a very different thing. That's helping people, providing people, allowing people to do what they like to do in the place they're doing it. There's a very different mentality than providing fishing zones. Because that means I'm going to deny you fishing there, but I tell you, if you go around the corner, you can fish. It's a very different attitude. So I, I'm very worried when I read fishing zones. And I hope all of you are worried from today onwards too. So um, a brand new promenade. What are the issues? A brand new promenade. What is the issue? It's Hong Kong. It's hot. It's bloody hot. What's the problem here? Brand new. One of our latest waterfront designs. This is how all our waterfront 73 kilometers are going to look like unless we change what we're doing. But this is what's going to be our waterfront 73 kilometers. Now, if you go to Ching Yi, Right next to that waterfront is an older waterfront, the MTR built, a few trees. Next to it is one that's built by the Housing Authority. Now that starts to become a really nice waterfront. Love to be there, fantastic shade, you can sit at the water. It's the best place to be at Ching Yi. And people are there, look. You go to any park, where are the people? Under the trees. It's hot. So we've got a problem with our waterfront design, so we've got to sort that out, and it hasn't been sorted out. Or just go along the road here. This is also in Ching Yi. It's not by the highways department. Trees are left, and don't dare to kill them. So it's a great place to walk around, except for the cars, of course, but at least you've got shade. Another issue about our waterfronts is just food and beverage. Um, drinking fountains. I see Anthony in the room. Does, you know, does, he might fill filling bottles. That's good. Although you can't fill a bottle here, so it needs to change the design there. But uh, food and beverage is a real issue, and if we want food and beverage right now at any waterfront, the discussion with people is always, oh, that's going to make it commercial. And commercial means Chung Kong, New World, Wheelock, Henderson, and whatever, in people's minds. So whenever you say, can we have some bars and restaurants at the waterfront, people go, like, no way. It's, we kind of figure out a way around that mindset. You know, there are eating and drinking in the waterfront. I was just in London, and you go to South Bank. It's jam-packed with people eating and drinking. That's, we love to do this all the time, eat and drink all the time. We just had our coffee break. So why can't you have a coffee break at the waterfront? Because it's commercial. So we have an issue with the community on the word, and I don't know whether it's Chinese or where the, where the problem comes from, but it's... A, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that we've got to resolve in Hong Kong. Final, why can't we go on the boat? This is Ching Yi. Guys love to go and have their boats. This is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, this is the junk for the poor men. This is the yacht of the poor men in Hong Kong. And we know Gini coefficient. We have a lot of poor people. You see this in Stanley, Chen Kuan Ho, Maan Shan, everywhere. Why does the guy have to have a wooden ladder and a rope to get on this boat? We do not support these guys having their boats. We're chasing them away, put fences, railings, and make it a, we're not helping them. And then when we do a new promenade, we put up a glass wall. This was used for boats. Look, 
This is a typhoon, this was a typhoon shelter, boats tied up. Where do we put the glass wall? The whole harbor was used for boats. Are we going to end up with a harbor 73 kilometers without boats? So then, I make a big fuss about it, because the bollards were there. So look at that. They solved the problem. The bollards are being kept. All right? So now we can have boats tied up. No. They put a piece of glass here. <laughs> you can't put a rope around it. Where this mindset comes from, I, I've been in the harbourfront business since 2003. I have no clue why this is happening. I cannot figure it out. I have no solution for it other than you know, taking a sledgehammer and bang people on their head every time I see them because there is just no solution for it other than banging people on the head because this is just so stupid. Okay? Now, so they talking about, even government talks about, we want pontoons, we want activities, we want fun in the Kuntung Typhoon Shadow. How are you going to tie up your pontoons? You don't have a bollard. LCSD says they don't manage bollards. Marine Department says I don't provide bollards in a typhoon shelter, so nobody wants to provide bollards. <laughs> so we've got to figure this out, how to solve it. Uh, we have done it in one typhoon shelter day there, that is in, uh, in Yaomade. There is a bollard, the railing sets back. You can walk through the railing, the kids can stay on this side. Papa and Mama can go fishing here, can get on a boat, boat's tied up, it works. Example in Hong Kong, it works. So why can't we have 73 kilometers of waterfront that looks like that, but you can tie boats? Then we would have things like this happening in some of our facilities, but we would also provide facilities for the guys with the poor man's yacht. Thank you very much.